Welcome back everybody. We're just going to go ahead and create a persistent reverse shell. We already have a reverse shell which is going to make it persistent. That would be a better way to put it. Anyway, hopefully you have the same setup as before. If not, just go ahead and repeat the steps. No big deal. Uh, let me just show you sessions that shell. I still have it up and running here. My session IDs are 5 and 6. Yours will be probably different if you have decided to redo the process or if you were doing the process like me in the first place, you'll probably have different session IDs. They'll probably be one and two or something of a kind because I've opened quite a bit of them and I haven't closed MSF. I haven't cleared the cache or anything of a kind. doesn't really matter. Different session IDs don't really mean that much. You can just change them. That's just one number in the whole command. Be careful about that. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, bring one of these sessions into foreground. Now session 6 is the one with elevated privileges, so let's go ahead and use it. Just like I showed you before, sessions-i space 6. So this session ID, you see where I'm typing 6 here, might be different for you, just change it accordingly. Press enter, there we go. Meterpreter is now up and running. So if I just uh, cannot clear the screen here, this is annoying beyond belief. Excellent. So what do we need here? We need to type in run space persistence space dash h for help menu and wait for it. There we go. So we got a several options here. It says automatically start a matching multi-handler to connect to the agent, location, payload use, automatically start the agent, alternate. There are a lot of things. We want this one automatically start the agent when the system boots. Feel free to uh, experiment with pretty much anything else here that you can see. Uh, use different ones, see what sort of options will you get, but they all work on pretty much the same principle uh, like what I'm going to do now. I just want the agent to boot immediately when somebody turns on the computer. And that is what interests me the most. Uh, so, same as before, run persistence, space dash A, instead of space dash H, you would type in space dash capital X, press enter, and wait for it. Du -du -du. Running, installing, persistent script, excellent. So one of the bad things about this is that these sessions don't actually require any login credentials. Anyone listening to this, uh, yeah. They could be able. They would be able to connect. Anybody following through the connections, uh, anybody attempting to connect, you know, would be able to listen for the connections that are being transmitted from the other end. Uh, they would be able to, well, not perhaps connect directly because the IP addresses are set there. But those IP addresses, if you're going over the net, are dynamic, and if you're in LAN. Um, okay, maybe they're static, maybe they're dynamic in LAN, I don't know, depending on how it was configured, but they would still definitely be able to listen to the traffic as well, so that can be a bit problematic. And it's an open type of connection, it only depends on the IP address, there are no actual login credentials, which is not, not, really, uh, not really nice. However, remember to clean up after yourselves. It says here resource file for cleanup. You can see where it is, the first line, I believe. And then it says installing into auto run as HKLMN software current version. This is the regedit files, if I'm not mistaken. There you can see it as well. And here you can see where the script is located. It's actually a Visual Basic script. Well, that's not a surprise, really. Anyway, you get the idea here. Now the persistence is up and running, the interpreter is up and running. Let's just try to reboot the system on the other end and see what happens. If I type in help, I'm sure that the command for reboot is reboot, but let's just uh, be certain of that. Ah, oh, come on, run, read, resource, run, nope. Upload, search, okay dear, oh, doesn't seem to be here. Okay, so here it is. Rebo reboots the remote computer system, under system commands, of course. Me being a genius that I am, looking in wrong places all the time. So type in reboot, and this is unlikely to work. Operation 
failed. Let's see if the Windows machine is still running. It is. Yep, there we go. No problems there. No change has taken effect. As I said, some commands here will work, some will not, but you always have the option of typing in shell and then doing it manually yourselves. Type in shutdown slash r, press enter. Oh, access is denied. Which session have I opened? Uh, Interpreter session six closed. Oh no, I've closed it. That's not what I want. But it doesn't really matter. The persistence is still running on the other side. Let's just see. I do believe that I have another one that is running. Okay, session five is running. Session stash I five. Press enter. Interaction is active. Shell. Interpreter is there. Okay. Process. You're gonna give me the shell? Yep, you will give me the shell. Let's go CD. Ah. I'm gonna exit out of here and shut down slash R. Shut down is not. Oh, shut down space slash R. Are you gonna do it? Okay, so there's a, ti a default timer of one minute. I should have configured a timer as well if I just type it in one more time you will see a system shutdown has already been scheduled so this is gonna start pretty soon should have given it timer let's see shutdown uh, r dash t zero will this work better excellent so it will if you give it a if you give it a time it's gonna shut down immediately if you don't give it a time i think the default is one minute which is, uh, I don't know, I guess I could have waited, but it's a tutorial, so didn't want to waste any time. Anyway, you can see that the Windows 8.1 machine is actually rebooting, and what you need to do on the other end, just press enter here and type in uh, session. Is it no active ses sessions? Okay, so just go as before. Uh, use exploit multi-handler exploit multi handler and let's see show options because you need to reopen it again on your end excellent so this seems to be uh, all seem seems to be in order here if I type in exploit it's listening so as soon as the Okay, the machine has booted, but I haven't really logged in. Let me just log in and see what happens on the other end. Windows 8.1, Kali. No, nothing. Come on, be a pal here. Let's start up. Ah, it just started and I interrupted it, but oh, no, okay, it, 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 did, it did open. My interpreter session opens, so if I type in shell, shell, uh, I don't know, it didn't work the first time, but let's see, just cd, cd, dear, and there we go. I am effectively in a Windows machine, and I can do, again, whatever I want to it. From this point onwards, I am in command of this Windows machine. I am omnipotent on it. I have greater power than the user. I just don't have the access to that shutdown physical button. But anyway, it doesn't really, uh, I don't know, it does make some difference, I guess, but nothing significant. You have full control over the machine. You can do from this point on, you can do whatever you want to it. Your options are countless. I've already showed you where you can find the options for key logging and webcam. Webcam is actually quite nice. Uh, it does take a bit of quite a bandwidth and keep in mind that somebody's going to be able to see when you turn the webcam on because the light is going to be turned on. However, I have I have I was honestly surprised when I saw that people didn't actually notice that always. They do notice it after a while but not immediately. Anyway, uh, feel free to play around, do whatever you wish with it. Uh try to find new ways of doing this. Uh, of elevating privileges, try out other exploits, and 
feel free to report your results on uh, Udemy in the discussions. And if you get stuck with anything, uh, I'll be, as always, I am more than happy to help you out. Just ask ask your questions away. Uh, quick reminder: I have given it in one of the other tutorials as well. If you could post the error messages that you get immediately, that does help me quite a that does help me a lot when solving your problem. And if you type in the exact command that you've used, and if you type in the exact error that you got from the system, that does help me a great deal because I can end, and then I can provide the solution far faster than you describing your problem and then me asking what the error message is and what the command is, and then you get you get one or two unnecessary cycles as opposed to just uh, going immediately to the problem. Anyway. I bid you all farewell and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.